What's going on guys? What's going on? Today I'm going to talk about why I chose EOS versus other uh, cryptos. And um, you know, at first, I guess uh, the backstory uh, for those who don't know, you know, I when I first came into the crypto scene, I was definitely a Bitcoin maximalist uh, to the fullest, to the fullest. Um, but over time, I started to realize there were certain problems that I, I foreseen that can't really uh, work for real mainstream adoption. Um, and I'm not really trying to talk bad about Bitcoin or whatnot. This is my opinion on why I started from one, one place to another and I ended up here. Um, you know, when I first got here, it, it, was, it was like you had a sense of purpose, you know. And now over time, I started feeling that it's more about moons and Lambos than uh, trying to change the world. And, and that's always been my thing when I first got here. You know, once I, I didn't even really care about the price. The price I didn't know about. Um, and over time, I felt like that... that the vision started to uh, diminish, um, and I started realizing, you know, there were certain problems, especially with the fees for Bitcoin. You know, when I, you know, especially when I seen the fees go up to the moon, I was like, wow, I should start investing in, in fees, man, just buy some fees, because <laughs> man, I'd have been rich dude, at that point in time. Um, until my US RAM, man, boy, you would have been, you've been golden there with the B, uh, BTC fees. Um, but from that, right at that point, I realized, yeah. Um, when I had family members, when I really want to talk about cryptocurrency and I want to get them involved and, and I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't tell them to buy Bitcoin because I would feel so guilty because they would have bought uh, $50 worth of Bitcoin and want to move it safely to a wallet and it would have had nothing. Um, so I started realizing, man, this isn't going to really work. And I know Bitcoin Cash came out with their whole approach. So I started to lean towards Bitcoin Cash and I, I, out of the two, I favor Bitcoin Cash as a disclaimer, guys. Um, but yeah, you know, that's just my two cents on that. Uh, I'm not really trying to bash, uh, uh, Bitcoin. I hope the lightning thing works, but, uh, I, I feel like we need, uh, mainstream adoption now. Um, now, now, uh, you know, back when I first got into the crypto scene, governments weren't really paying attention to cryptocurrency. They didn't give a damn. They laughed at it. Uh, they thought it was a joke. <laughs> you know, they really didn't care about it. It was just like another thing, uh, a uh, fad. And over time, you started noticing they really started paying attention. And now we're at the point where they're they're involved. They're getting involved. They want to know what's going on. They they start to know the language. Huddle. You see on CNBC, they're getting involved. You start to notice that the mainstream uh, people that you might not really want to get involved are starting to get involved. And um, I started to notice that. I'm, I'm realizing we, we don't have time to mess around anymore. Back then we did, uh, but we kind of blew it. We pissed it away, you know. So now. Um, like what Coinbase, you see, um, reminding you about the, the whole taxes and stuff. Taxes on Coinbase. I mean, when I first got here, uh, you know, that was never a thing, you know. And it's just like, I, it's just, you know, we, we have a, a very small window. If we really want, because I feel, I always believed cryptocurrencies could be either the most powerful thing to free humanity or it could be the, the one of the most devastating thing that could uh, enslave humanity. Um, it could be either or, and I feel like we're getting close at crossroads, and we need to do things to actually uh, get ahead of that, because, you know, entities like government started cashing up, you know. So I feel like we're finally getting ahead of what stuff like EOS, um, you know, the transaction speeds are phenomenally fast. Today, uh, I, I, I downloaded the link, EOS links wallet a few days ago, but today I actually uh, made a transaction to it, because I never actually... Um, seen never actually visually watched the transaction you know i i'll send a transaction to my my other wallet on my laptop and i'll get up walk to it and i'll be oh wow, i was there but i never actually visually looked at it to see how quickly it would get there and i sent it from my gray mass um over to my us uh links and by the time i looked from the screen from the computer to my phone it was there i was like wow um <laughs> this is what i've been waiting for you know i've been waiting for this this to happen um, this, this fees, there is no fees. Um, the EOS DEX, a uh, DEX EOS, new DEX, you could trade no fees. It's just mind blowing to me. It's like, it's, and it's, it's, it's wild, man. Yeah, I know BitShares had a decentralized exchange and stuff like that, but for me, guys, when I first got into BitShares, it didn't look like it did now. It was rough. It was kind of sketchy rough. Um, right now, it looks like something totally different from when I remembered it. It was, it was, it was questionable, you know, I, I, I'm getting into the crypto scene, I, I'm seeing this bit shares, and it's just like, I'm not sure if I want to do it, but 
You know, with Dan Lemery, he does things before his time. I noticed that he, a lot. A lot of uh, people don't can't appreciate that. You know, that was before my time. Before I was ready for it. You know, it was important, but I feel like I, I, for someone like me, I wasn't ready for it. Um, you know, I felt like it was too much over my head to really to go out and, and, and risk my Bitcoin on something that I don't really understand fully. Uh, now I get it. Now I can appreciate it. You know, after the years later, I can appreciate it now. And I'm starting to see this, these uh, decentralized exchanges starting to spring up. And that's good. Uh, we need to get away from this KYC thing. Um, it's not something that we want. It defeats the whole purpose of cryptocurrency if we have to upload your whole life to it. Your utility, uh, IDs, blood samples, DNA, everything. Everything, you got to give your whole life to it. It, it, what's the point? You know, what's the point being decentralized and semi-anonymous, anonymous or whatnot? If you have to give up everything, that kind of makes no sense. Um, so I'm starting, I'm liking what I'm seeing with these uh, DEXs popping up. Um, you know, I did at first, uh, out of the two new decks and Dex UX, at first I, I did, I, I started to like new decks because I, for some reason, I don't know if it's just paranoia, I just felt like it was a little bit faster. I don't know why. Um, but then I noticed something, a new, well, it's not really a new feature, but a feature that you at uh, Dex US has that New Dex doesn't is the tally, which I think New Dex does have it, but uh, Dex US has it on the, on the trading screen where you can see all the uh, airdrops you have and how much they're valued total. I like that. You know what I mean? You don't have to really like go and see how much each one is worth or not. It's just totally, it's right there. They give you the total so you know how much. Um, their work uh, as a whole. So I like that. Um, oh no, did he die? I just downloaded, um, well I didn't download it, I, I'm using the EOS Knights uh, as a game, it's going to be built on the mobiles, uh, Android or Apple. Uh, I just bought a character, um, Scarlet, uh, I guess it's the magic one, the girl I guess, I don't know, uh, for 0 0.1 EOS. I want to play with this. This is why I came for this. I knew stuff like this could be built. So uh, last time I, I played with this, they wanted you to upload your private keys. I, I was just kind of sketchy. My friend did it with a wallet that barely had anything. So we got to kind of mess around and see what it was about. But uh, um, this is actually working with Scatter on the desktop. Um, unfortunately, NS James hasn't came out with the Scatter uh, for mobile. And that's something I feel like we're going to need because uh, that would be a great thing to have. Because uh, I, I feel once once uh, he makes that, um, all the dApps, mobile dApps that want to come out for mobile for, uh, built on the EOS blockchain can do so. Because now we will have scattered. We can do the same thing we can do on desktop on the mobile. Um, I feel like that would be awesome if we could get that out. Because uh, that would be so much more convenient. I would like to play some of these games. Or not even just games. Some uh, painting apps. I don't know. There's so many. Well, not even apps. Dapps. I'm sorry. Dapps. Uh, there's so many dapps that can be built uh, just on mobile that it, it's just mind blowing. I'd rather, I'd rather uh, be on the go. And it's so awesome to be able to show your friends or family. Uh, just a year ago, you talked about this EOS thing, and now, now, so quickly, you can play games and, and dapps on your smartphone on the EOS blockchain. That's awesome. You know, we all hear about the transaction per second, almost 4,000 transactions per second. That's great on paper. But the average Joe, uh, can't comprehend that. You know, it sounds it just sound like it's just a number in their head, and like, oh, that's great. But visually seeing how fast something is and playing with it, as such as a game, you get to really appreciate the speed and really get to understand uh, what this can do. So um, I'm really excited. I'm not sure what happened. I, I think I died. Yeah, I think I died. I'm gonna I'm gonna play with it after I'm done with this video. I'm not sure how it works, um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I definitely uh, reasons why I chose EOS versus like Tron or Neo and stuff like that. Number one with Neo, and this is not to bash any other cryptocurrency. This is why I chose uh, EOS versus them. Um, Neo with the gas thing, I'm not into the whole gas thing. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it. All right, <laughs> I don't want to pay gas for everything I do. Um, you know, I understand like. Um, uh, cryptos like you know Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Monero, because they're trying to be currencies. Their primary function is a currency. Yes, I know Bitcoin Cash can do some platform stuff too, but their main focus is being money. Um, so I understand. I understand that there is somewhat of a fee, 
I, I get that. Uh, but stuff like this, where you're basically building stuff off of it, I, I don't want to pay every single time I want to move a character uh, in a game. That, that would just get really annoying. Um, so yeah, you know, I've I seen that Neo has that problem with gas and stuff like that. So it just reminded me of, of Theorem. And I know Neo has a lot of problems. Some problems that uh, uh, EOS had at the very beginning of his launch that Neo had, and no one has mentioned it. And it's just crazy how people sweep certain things under the rug um, and, and ex try to expose something else. Uh, I'm not going to mention nothing. If you do your research, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's pretty uh, public information. Um, as far as Tron, Tron, uh, I did own some Tron. Um, I sold it because I started realizing uh, once I heard about them kind of like plagiarizing the Steam it uh, white paper, I kind of looked at it. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's factual or not. So I kind of kept my eye on that. But then I started noticing, especially after the uh, once the main net started to launch, uh, you, you had your uh, Tron tokens in the Exodus wallet. Uh, you can store it there. Um, and then they recommended to move your funds to uh, Binance. Um, I wasn't hearing any information that, hey, maybe you should move it to, you should register your wallets or something like how EOS had it, trying to empower the user to learn how to use the cryptocurrency and how to maneuver in the space. No, just leave it on Binance. And that's like the golden rule. You don't want to send your funds to an exchange to, for them to take care of it. Because they're, they're not your funds. So I, I kind of frowned upon that. And that's why I just kind of like sold it. I'm like, ah, just not. You know, I was expecting, you know, just how EOS had it where you register uh, your, your Tron tokens. You know, I, I was expecting that. That didn't happen. Um, I guess it's, it, it, it works out for new people who don't know how to do all that registration stuff. But I was always taught... You know, if your coins are on an exchange, they're not your tokens. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, at least with EOS, to give you the option you can put on Binance or you, you can do the responsible thing and register it yourself. Uh, so, I, I like that. Um, and um, and from what I'm hearing now, I think Tron is actually trying to go to DPOS, just like EOS is. <laughs> so, I feel like, you know, Tron is trying to mimic EOS in a way. Uh, I'm not saying it in a bad way. I just kind of show you that maybe DPoS is uh, a superior way of doing things uh, for platforms. Maybe for um, cryptocurrencies, uh, proof of work might be better because you know you actually put some labor in uh, mining these coins. You're not just pumping out a bunch. Uh, so maybe I get it for that aspect uh, for those type of cryptos. Um, but yeah, that's I, I, and as far as Cardano, you guys know the whole story with Cardano. I bought a little and then I try to use their wallet. I uh, didn't load for like 24 hours, so I just said, right, I'm out of here. Um, if, you're low, if your wallet ain't loading, <laughs> it's like, it, if I can't store it anywhere besides an exchange, then I, I don't want to use it. Um, so that was back then. Um, I'm just not really into any other, like, I'm not into so many cryptos. You, there's so many, like, there's certain YouTubers that would, like, every week they have new cryptocurrency trying to, like, shovel, shove in your face. I'm not really into that. I, I find a project and I kind of settle down with it and I, I give it time to, to do its thing. Um, I'm not in here for a quick money grab, you know, I'm here for the long haul. So I'm in no rush, you know, I'm really not in any rush. That's why when I seen, um, this, uh, guy on Telegram, it was a funny comment. You could tell he was a new guy to this space. It's just, it's just funny. Um, he said, uh, uh, basically he bought US at $20 and then, um, he said, is US a scam? Because now it's $5. It's just funny. It's just, if you're new, guys, just be patient with things. Things don't happen overnight, you know. Um, things take time in this crypto space. You know, people sometimes might go to the moon rapidly, but it never stays there for very long. Um, look at Bitcoin. People bought Bitcoin at $20,000, and uh, Bitcoin dropped down to, like, five, five, high 5,000 area. Uh, is Bitcoin a scam? I mean, that's kind of essentially which, how you have to look at it, you know. Um... <laughs> So, you know, you just got to be patient, guys. But as far as um, the longevity of EOS, I feel like it's going to be one of those cryptos that if you if you panic sold early in the game, you're going to regret it a year or two down the road. Uh, I made that same mistake with a lot of other cryptocurrencies, um, and I regret it. <laughs> and we're all going to go through that same mistake. It's just a thing, the natural flow of the crypto space. You, it's just always those regrets uh, that you have in here, those, those moves that you made that you probably shouldn't have. Um, but with this, I definitely, it's almost obvious, it's pretty obvious that this is going to uh, be something huge. You got to just look at the people who are around, who are involved in, in, in this, in this uh, 
in this project. You know, when I first really heard about uh, EOS, um, it was Jeff Jeff Burick on uh, Dollar Vigilante, but Daniel Lammer, Lammer, Lammer um, sorry for that question, oh, <laughs> uh, talking about uh, the Ethereum killer. Um, that caught my attention. That really caught my attention because I knew from there, you know, Jeff Burick doesn't really just spits out a bunch of uh, cryptos every week to talk about and tries to just pump up these coins. He, he's very picky on what he talks about. And for him to really have a title, the Ethereum killer, he knows something that the rest of us didn't know. I don't know if Dan and him talk, but, uh, you know, I, I kind of knew from there that, yeah, maybe I need to really start paying attention to this U.S. thing. And I started really gobbling up as many as I can, even though it was declining, declining in price. And you could tell people were panicking because it was like five dollars when it got released and it went all the way down to like 50 cents i was just gobbling them up <laughs> so yeah and then um he's got to look at the people who are around this project you know you got dan lammer uh dollar vigilante talking about it, and a block producer um you got uh us fish well mike mike uh mike Heiser, and uh the other bitcoin miner the first bitcoin miner uh for F2, F pool, I believe he's involved in uh, US as a miner. Um, Jihan Wu, you know, Mike Novogratz, Peter Till. I mean, come on, yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious. I don't know how obvious you can paint a picture when you start seeing all these people kind of starting to focus on one particular cryptocurrency. It should kind of give you a sign. I mean, how many other cryptos got this much focus and this much attention so early on in the game? And from what I hear from the EOS Foundation, because of is some talk about it. I don't know if this is true. Um, so I'm not going to say, don't quote me on this. Don't don't just take my word on it. But this is what I'm hearing. And I, I would love for someone to tell me if this is true or not. But uh, Akon, the singer, is going to be involved with the uh, U.S. Foundation. I don't know if it's true. Uh, please let me know if it's true or not. Because I, I that would be huge. That would be interesting to know that Akon is, is involved with the U.S. Foundation. Um, he's done a lot, a lot of great things for Africa. Putting, taking his own money in and going to Africa and, and putting up uh, lights and stuff for everyone there. Uh, in his own pocket. So uh, he got a good heart. So if that is the case, that means we got a, a golden team there with, with good hearts. Um, but yeah, please let me know. I, I'm still trying. I'm still baffled if it's true or not. Uh, but if it is, that's just another person right there, just that's interested in this. What's going on here? Uh, you got to go where the people are going. The big people are going, you know, and that's kind of where you you, you want to lay your eggs there. Um, but yeah, guys, there's many other reasons why um, why I chose the EOS, and uh, I could go probably go on and on about it, but I'm definitely not going to go off on a tangent. But yeah, you know, definitely play this game. Go and try this game out, EOS Nights, uh, and tell me what you think about it. It's pretty interesting, and I like seeing progress like this to me it's just like it's fascinating only two months into uh its mainnet launch i'm already getting stuff built um i know telos and i think there's another uh there's going to be a side chain to eos um but i know telos is going to uh kind of like do like be like a sister chain or something like that where it's not really on us blockchain or anything but they've taken the code and trying their own method of doing their own uh envision what eos should be like uh, I had no real problem with tell us. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting. You know, I every time we have a, a situation where like another group wants to go off in their own way, it's always like some uh, conflicting type of scenario where like it's just like you know how Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and um, the Litecoin and Litecoin Cash, and you know stuff like that. And Monero had their forks, and they all like uh, uh, fighting and with, with, with in Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. I remember when Ethereum Classic first for Boy, there was a lot of uh, uh, animosity. There wasn't, <laughs> there wasn't uh, kumbaya the way people paint the picture, uh, at least for a while, and then eventually things simmer down. But what what, what tell us in the EOS is I don't see that. There's no uh, there's no friction. There's no static. There's no like um, uh, tribalism. Like oh, us versus you. I see a lot of cooperation going on. I like that. That's interesting. That that changes the dynamics a little because I'm not used to something like this. So I'm really curious to see how this goes. Um, it's like they're working as one but they're separate but they give each other information like hey this might work this might not work to build a better project overall i'm interested to see how this goes because i haven't really seen nothing like this play out um for since the beginning you know i'm always always when saw another group wants to split off is always uh some type of uh, tribalism that ended up happening so uh, 
it'll be interesting to see. So guys, I definitely made it to 20 minute video. Uh, so uh, go check this out, this app out, and play with it. Tell me what you think. And uh, I'm going to end it here, guys. See ya.